Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and this is section 9.7. Students now come into section 9.7 with some knowledge of vectors and why we work with them, so now naturally it's time to bring in the calculus components. So the essential question we would like students to be able to answer at the end of section 9.7 is how do I integrate and differentiate vector valued functions? So the first couple of examples do a great job of addressing mathematical practice number two, since we're connecting concepts now. But it's interesting to note that students actually are almost bewildered by how easy this seems at first. Because really, yes, you can just differentiate each component, and you can integrate on a component by component basis as well. So this is a good thing. Sometimes it'll even give them a little confidence because the year has seemed so, so long and arduous at this point. Now, let's talk about higher order derivatives. Again, it's easier than they might think. If we had to find the second or third derivative of a vector valued function, it is as simple as just continuing on from the first derivative that we obtained. When we talk about integration, students do have an option with their constant of integration if we're dealing with indefinite integrals. Would you like to put that in each component plus c, or would you like to just put that plus c at the end of the entire vector? Their choice. Now, as far as mistakes are concerned, actually, my students don't make too many. But if they do start to make them, it actually is with their calculator. And here's why. First off, we always have to remember that if we are using the calculator for something, we need to be rounding to a minimum of three decimals to maintain accuracy. Secondly, students sometimes forget that if we are going to be graphing something and it's parametric in nature, we actually have to be in parametric mode. And then if we are including something trigonometric, are you in radian mode? So look for these things as well. Now, I can ask my students how to differentiate an integrated vector, but there's so much more and things to be applied. And we're going to see that next section. And that's when we really will start to see more higher level questions. Position, velocity, acceleration, total distance, things of this nature. So I hope these tips have been helpful. And I'm sure you'll find much success in section 9.7.